So here we're asked to sketch the graph in one period for this secant curve. We're going to go through and approach it just like we did before with sine and cosine. We're understanding that secant's reciprocal is cosine. So think about the approach we use for a cosine curve here. We found things like amplitude, period, horizontal shift or phase shift, and vertical shift. So if you start with your amplitude, you're starting with that value that's in front of the function. That value is 3. You're taking the absolute value of 3. You're getting 3 back. To find the period, just like we did before, we're taking 2 pi and we're dividing by k. Now, what would be helpful here to do uh, in terms of the original function? Okay, we've got a 2 sitting in front of that x. We need to factor out. Now that 2 is going to be our k value, whether it's in the factored form or not. So we know the period is definitely going to be pi. And if we go through like we did before, take 1 fourth of that, the little increments we want to add on are going to be pi over 4. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead and put this in the factored form, which I probably should have done to start. You've got y equals 3 secant of, take the 2 out, x remains plus pi over what? 4. four. <laughs> right, you take the 2 out, you multiply back to the 2, that was a denominator here, that'll give you your new denominator there of 4. Now back to the shifts, you're finding these shifts still, what's the horizontal shift going to be? Got to have the factored form for that negative pi over 4. Right. Got to change the sign. And vertical shift is going to be 0. There's nothing added or subtracted to the front. <laughs> so setting up the graph. We are starting on the negative side here, so be aware of that with the horizontal shift. Our amplitude, though, is going to be 3. With no vertical shift to worry about, we can go ahead and mark that off pretty easily. But you're starting at negative pi over 4. Now, if you think about what happens here as you're adding on your little, little increment value of pi over 4, right? Our next key value that we're going to come to is going to be 0. Because it's negative 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. You're back at 0. Knowing you've got to find 5 points total, we can go ahead and mark off our three other spaces. We're currently at zero, adding this one fourth. It's going to give us one fourth again. It's a pi over four. Adding another fourth would give us two fourths. Reduced is one half, so pi over two. And another fourth would be three fourths. So still finding the same key values from before. Keeping in mind that secant goes with cosine if. I needed to draw cosine. Cosine would start even here with the horizontal shift up at that amplitude value of 3. It would hit the origin. It would bottom out at pi over 4, come back to the axis, and then right back at the same level where it started. Cosine would look like this. Remember, this is not the graph I want. I'm only using it as guidance to come up with secant to get the actual secant graph. Everywhere I see an intercept for cosine, I'm going to draw an asymptote. So there's going to be two intercepts. Got two asymptotes. Any other key point that was a key point for cosine, like I have here to start and to end, and right down here at the bottom, that's still going to be a key point. And basically, we've got three sections we're working with where we're flipping curves. So over here, flip the curve up. In between, we flip the curve down. And at the end, we flip the curve up. 
there's your graph for secant. All right, so we're graphing one period for cosecant. We know the reciprocal of cosecant is sine, so we're using what we know about a sine graph here as guidance. Go through as we did before, find your amplitude, your period, your horizontal shift, and your vertical shift. As we saw in the last one, got to make sure everything's in the, uh, the factored form, correct? This one, though, notice there's no vertical shift, right? Nothing's added or subtracted to the front. There's also no horizontal shift. because We don't see a little set of parentheses, do we? Normally, this x is inside the parentheses, but nothing's added or subtracted on here. So we could say horizontal shift is 0. Find your amplitude, you're taking the absolute value of the number in front of the function, so that number would be one half. Find the period, we're still taking two pi, dividing by k, so yeah, k would be two, two's in front of x. So another original example here, because I got the same period as the one we were just doing. Meaning, we take one fourth, we get that same little increment value we've got to add on. To the graph we go. Once again, graphing cosecant based on what we know about sine. For the amplitude value, we mark that off at 1 half and negative 1 half. For the horizontal shift, this graph is starting at zero, right? So that makes it easy to uh, mark off the remaining spaces for the values we'll still need. We're starting at zero. We're adding on this pi over four to get the next value. So we're getting pi over four, obviously. And then we continue to add on pi over four. So one fourth plus one fourth, two fourths or one half, add on another fourth, got three fourths now, three pi over four, add on one more fourth, you're going to get four fourths, or just one pi. As we just discussed with the question we had, right, take that end point, subtract back to the beginning point. Make sure that the value you get back, which is the distance of the period, matches up to the pi right here, which it would. So for graphing cosecant based on what we know about sine, if I fill in the sine portion of the curve as guidance, start here at the origin, go up here to 1 half, back to pi over 2 at the axis, bottom out here at 3 pi over 4, back to the axis. This is not the actual graph we want, so I'm just keeping this real light as guidance. Now that I've got my points to guide me for the actual cosecant graph, anywhere you see an intercept, you put an asymptote. So we've got three of those. Any other key points from the sine curve remain as key points for cosecant. So we've got two of those. We've got two sections now that we've divided this graph up into. We just go into each section and flip the curves. There you go. There's your cosecant example.